from levitation to random unplugged appliances catching on fire, the Smurl family had it rough with their haunting. The Smurl family haunting is a well-known case of alleged paranormal activity that took place in the 1970s to the 1980s. The family consisted of Jack and Janet Smurl, their children, and Jack's mother. They claim to have experienced a series of disturbing and terrifying events in their home. According to the Smurls, they encountered a wide range of paranormal activity, including loud noises, physical attacks, strange odors, objects moving on their own, along with reported apparitions, and experienced fear and a sense of unease within their home. The case gained significant media attention with newspapers and television networks covering the story. The Smurls allowed paranormal investigators, including Ed and Lorraine Warren, to examine their home. The Warrens, who were well known in the field of demonology and paranormal investigations, claimed that the house was infested with malevolent spirits. However, skepticism and controversy surrounded the Smurl haunting. Some skeptics believe that the family experiences could be explained by natural phenomena or psychological factors. Others accuse the family of exaggerating or fabricating the events for attention or financial gain. Despite the debate, the Smurl family maintained their claims of paranormal activity. They eventually moved out of the house and the activity seemed to follow them briefly. The case remains a topic of interest and discussion among paranormal enthusiasts and skeptics alike. So we're going to be going through this, analyzing and talking about this, okay? So I did some channeling to get some information and not gonna lie, it was difficult. So I took notes of my channeling and just like of the case itself. Now I'm gonna go through the haunting history of the Smurls and this is according to them so paranormal activity allegedly allegedly began when they started home renovations. I'm saying allegedly because I suspect that things were going on, but they just hadn't noticed anything until it got really bad. Now tools would disappear and reappear. When this happens, it is called apports. Wall stains would seep through fresh paint, again, building, frustration, and negative emotions. Appliances would catch on fire even though they were unplugged. So this is where the entity is demonstrating its power to cause fear and to show its control over the family. That's kind of like the beginning of that. Awful odors of rotted meat. That is a common feature of a demonic haunting. In 1974, Jack's mother suffers a heart attack and, you know, malevolent entities absolutely have this capability, some more than others, usually demonic entities, however, you know, you can get into demonized earthbound spirits that can do it and other non-human entities. Now, this actually did happen to Ed Warren during one of his cases. I believe it was the case of... The Devil Made Me Do It with Arnie Johnson. I believe it was that case where he had his heart attack from the entity. Um, They would start hearing disembodied voices of the mother. Janet experienced sleep paralysis and seeing the entity in her room. And the entity essayed her. The TV set caught on fire. They were experiencing bad luck. Water pipes began leaking. There was a lot of financial hardships. When it comes to hauntings, this is actually pretty common. 
It's just another way to put people in a lower vibration to feed off their negative energy. In 1977, the radio, the sinks, and the toilets would run on their own. The toilets would just like start flushing on their own. Drawers would open and close. Jack would experience the sensation of hands on him. Chairs would start stacking on the table by themselves. The family would go up to go to bed, right? And then in the morning they'd come down to see all their chairs stacked up on the table. And I'll insert the picture of that somewhere. It's kind of like one of the famous pictures that has been circulating around the internet. They noticed the paranormal activity grew worse after Janet had her twins. Which, you know, doesn't surprise me because I've noticed in hauntings that when people experience happy times, the entity tries really hard to take that away to keep the person or people in that low vibration. Bringing a child, or in their case, children into the world was most likely a happy and exciting time for them. So the entity was probably like, "Mm mm-mm, not today. Apparitions and wall stains would appear simultaneously, Janet and Jack began to have violent fights, so the marriage was falling apart, and of course the entity, you know, would cause that to feed off the negative energy. The entity would also mimic the fight, rubbing salt into the wounds to remind them of past arguments to fuel further and future arguments. Again, it's a feeding tactic. A chandelier fell on the daughter, or on one of the daughters, hurting her. Shannon reports levitating above her bed and being thrown against the wall. Again, this is the entity demonstrating its power to cause fear and to show its control over the family. And I'll insert another picture because I believe this picture goes with this haunting. And it's another famous picture. The German shepherd Simon had levitated. Just leave the goddamn animals alone. Damn it. Anyway. Shannon began getting assaulted by the entity. Entity again showing its dominance and power over the family and trying to get them to lose hope. Jack had been forced to stay asleep and also had sleep paralysis at some points. You know, this can happen with other entities, not just demonic entities. As long as they're malevolent, you know, this can happen. This has actually happened to me before quite a few times. The entity will keep me in like this sleeping state. And it's also a sleep paralysis at the same time because it's like your body wants to wake up. Every part of you wants to wake up, but you can't and you are aware of it. Which is also why I consider this a type of sleep paralysis. Because, you know, you can't move and, you know, your eyes are closed. You're kind of feeling like you're sleeping, but you know you're not sleeping and you're trying to get up, but you can't. Scratching on the walls, hearing breathing sounds. Entity slams Jack's head against the floor after sleep paralysis, again showing its strength. Ed and Lorraine Warren investigate, pointing out there were four spirits. One in earthbound female spirit who was trapped there against her will. A younger, angry, resentful female earthbound spirit. A male earthbound spirit who murdered his wife. A demonic entity who uses the other three spirits to strengthen itself. Now, Father McKenna attempts an exorcism, but the activity gets worse. And I'm pretty sure the first exorcism was on the house. Which, again, is going to piss off the entity. Oftentimes, too, even if they did the exorcism where it should have been, which would have been on the people, oftentimes, you know, one exorcism isn't enough. And I've said this previously in other videos. Typically, one exorcism is not enough. And the reason is, if the victim or victims do not deal with the point of entry and what it's latched to like traumas, it may be more difficult to get rid of 
the attachment. And until they are ready, it won't leave or get kicked out. But there are rare exceptions, of course, where, you know, that is not the case. But oftentimes, again, one exorcism ain't enough and you need multiple. And while that's going on, the people have to work on themselves. And I always preach this when I'm helping clients that I can clear space, you know, all day, all night, whatever. But if you don't fix the mode of entry and the anchor, aka the reason to why it's attached in the first place, it's just gonna come back. So that's why it's important to fix that stuff. Eventually they figure out the demonic entity had become tied to the family instead of the house. So yeah, if it's an attachment, only cleansing the space will not fix the problem and it'll just piss off the entity. And I will say it is part of the solution but again, you need to work on the other things as well. Daughter Karen grows so ill by a mysterious illness. Literally my entire freaking life is a mysterious illness. And so I completely understand how this works because it's like you can have other entities or entities in general causing illness. But in this case, the point of this was so the entity could weaken the person's mental health and physical health to where it could eventually possess the daughter. Children are easier to possess because all those things are weaker in general and they don't understand what is going on and so they're more likely to give up fighting. Um, they experienced more psychic attacks. Second exorcism causes multiple EVPs and chokes Ed Warren only to fail in the end, which causes more severe attacks. So, you know, because of what was going on, I'm pretty sure they had to stop the exorcism or it was like the, what was going on kind of distracted them from completing it properly. But even so, you know, at this point, the entity was scared and it was fighting for its life and did everything it could to get them to stop out of desperation. That's how you know what they were doing was the correct, you know, method. Because of the severity of how it lashed out, it was threatened. Jack encounters a six to seven foot apparition and hurts his back. Again, a form of the demonic entity showing its ass in an apparition form. Medium, Mary Alice Rickman confirms the four entities and spirits. And then the third exorcism, they used four priests and Bishop McKenna had been working with them for three months. Um, Demon tries to possess Jack but fails. Family moves but the activity follows them which, well, duh, it's an attachment, not, you know, a house haunting. The fourth exorcism was performed on the family itself and it seemed to work. And so after that, that paranormal activity stopped. Yay. All right, so now we're going to get into my channel and discoveries based off of said channel. So I do want to throw out a disclaimer before I continue stating that not all psychic mediums will receive the same psychic impressions due to their ability, skill set, and the references their spirit guides use to communicate information. So just because one person doesn't get the same as another doesn't mean they're wrong. And many people in this community don't understand that. So yeah, anyway. So my intention beginning my channel was to pick out the dark things instead of looking at every possible entity in the space. More specifically to see what exactly was causing the paranormal activity and why. So I wanted to see if what Ed and Lorraine Warren said was correct, at least. Like I wanted to see if what I saw matched up with them. It's also good practice. But so, so while other mediums picked out four spirits during that time, when I took a look, I picked out three. At first, I did see four. However, it was soon apparent that one of the female 
female earthbound spirits um, was not an earthbound spirit. But the way I saw it was this person, this female, had dark hair, pale skin, and looked young around her mid-20s. But she was not actually human. But one of the masks or forms the demonic entity used to throw people off. Now, this is something that happens that is very common. You know, demonic entities are not the only entities that can shapeshift and change its form. Other entities can do that. I've come across earthbound spirits that can do that as well. But in this case, this demonic entity used the presence of a female to disguise itself. Now, I do believe that this demonic entity did hold an earthbound spirit captive, but I also think that the male earthbound spirit who killed his wife wasn't as restricted as the female, only because he was becoming descended himself, so he was becoming demonized, essentially. But that is not to say that the demonic entity didn't keep him on a tight leash. So, there are still two other earthbound spirits there, but that fourth one isn't actually an earthbound spirit. I feel as though he used both the male and the female earthbound spirits to feed off of while simultaneously feeding off of the Smurl family. Now the family believes everything started when they began renovations on the house, but I firmly believe that the entity didn't come from the house itself. It was actually an attachment. Now, every single time I would attempt to find information about the point of entry, the entity would put me to sleep, so I realized that I had to find another way to get that information. Not gonna lie, it was very frustrating. Initially, I knew the entity had been placed upon the family from a third party, as in it was brought there by someone. When it comes to demonic entities, very rarely do they naturally exist in our realm or in our space. About 98% of the time, a person brings them in through dark magic, occult tools, such as like a Ouija board, addictions, etc. That's not to say all addictions attract demonic entities, but I threw addictions in there because it was like the combination of everything plus a potential addiction. Yeah. So luckily, you know, with my deck, I was able to validate what I suspected and then I was able to build off from there so the point of entry findings so through my cards they validated that this entity was brought to this family through a family curse and addiction though I know not of whom specifically had the addiction technically the addiction was part of the family curse but I will admit that I am not entirely sure if the curse itself had the demonic entity already associated with it or if it became attracted to the family due to the energy caused by the curse and the addiction. For me to know for sure, I'd have to know the specific. I can never say that word. Oh my gosh. I would have to know the specificities oh my god don't don't judge me of the curse okay i would need to know how the curse was made up like the intentions of the curse to know you know how it was made and if you know the demonic entity was associated with it because every time i would try to channel and get information through my channels it would put my ass to sleep so I gave up and I was like, you know what, if it's going to do that, I might as well just not because it's affecting my energy and that's not good. So I was like, mm, I'm going to cut the channel from there and yeah, that's why I use my cards because it was safer. In my opinion, I think it came with the curse and was brought here due to its significant amount of power and abilities based on what I know this is what I feel. So I could be wrong, which is okay. It's okay to be wrong. This is how we learn. As for the earthbound spirits, I feel as though the male and the female were already part of the land and the demonic entity took advantage of them where it could. And like I stated previously, the younger female is part of the demon's facade. 
so the point of entry was just the demon itself since it's not a separate entity. During my channel, of course, this is a common theme now. Since making the Colby video, um, Colby's name popped up towards the end of this channel and interfered with my ability to obtain more information, which is Spirit's way of telling me I'm not done with Sam and Colby. And of course, it's not their fault, so I'm not darn hate or shade. That's just how shit happens. Sometimes when, you know, I work on a case, if that case isn't fully, you know, gone through, Spirit will bring it back up and be like, hey, you're not done. And that's the same thing with Sam and Colby and Yasko. But Yasko is pending because I'm still waiting for him to, like, respond. I mean, he responded initially the first time, but he hasn't, like, gone through all my messages. So, that one's pending. <laughs> but anyway, another thing to take into consideration is sometimes cases have similarities to one another, and I feel as though that is the case here with both Sam and Colby. It's just frustrating because Spirit will not let me drop them and move on, even though if I make another warning video for them, they're, they're not ready to see it and take in the information. Their egos, and I'm not saying this as like uh, being nasty. Everyone has an ego because we're human. Humans have egos. Their egos are still in the way. And unfortunately, it will come to something traumatic and horrible before they start to listen, which is what I... And so many other people are trying to avoid. We don't want anything nasty to happen to anybody, let alone Sam and Colby. But a lot of times, for people to listen, something terrible has to happen. And I wish it wasn't that way. But to be honest, it was like that for me. I didn't believe any of this shit until my ass got dragged off my bed by my ankle. So, yeah, sometimes that's just the way it be. But... We can't force people to listen or accept the information that we give. All we can do is lay out and provide the information and when they are ready, it will be there for them to soak up that information. So guys, keep that as a lesson. We can't force people to acknowledge or listen to the things that spirit, you know, gives us to tell to them, all right? That's just how it is. When they are ready, they will listen. Now, entity behavior analysis. It's fine. Okay, so we're going to go through some more information here of the actions of the entity. So overall, the entity was an attachment caused by or attracted to the family due to a curse that was put upon them. So that's, that's where invitation and infestation come in. Based off of what I know about the family, I suspect that the attachment was more focused around Jack and his side of the family. And I suspect that if anyone had any sort of addiction, again, this is alleged, this is alleged, it would be one or more of them. So on Jack's, Jack's side of the family. Because if you notice, Jack had a lot of physical stuff going on. So did his wife. But... My intuition's telling me that the addiction would be from him and his side of the family and also the curse. The reason for this is because of how the demonic entity tried to possess him. Those with addictions unknowingly lower their psychic shield and psychological barriers that help keep things from entering their auric field. Negative entities are extremely drawn to those with any type of traumas or mental health issues, especially addiction problems. Additionally, it attacked Jack's mother, who was older, and his children. Older and younger, so you have elderly and children, are commonly victims just because of their maturity for children, um, age, and like their capabilities of uh, health vulnerabilities 
so on and so forth, that can hinder their mind and body. Children are easier to scare and manipulate, unfortunately. And um, even some, I wouldn't say um, scare for elderly, but definitely manipulate because if they're not in their right mind due to age, again, it's easier to manipulate them. Based off the entity's mode of attack against Janet, it tells me there is possibly a trauma in her past that included S.A. So I suspect that she might have been an S.A. victim at some point. Why? Because that's part of the entity's tactic to drudge up old wounds to keep her at a low point mentally and energetically. Also, it is most likely her anchor the anchor in which the entity is attached. So the entity is attached to both, well, I would say the entity is attached to the entire family, but more so to, you know, Jack, Janet, and like some of the daughters. Also, if Jack really did have an addiction, that would be the anchor for him, which would keep the entity around. And I suspect he has or had abuse towards him, like child abuse. But also back in that time, you know, the parenting styles are so much different than uh, what they are now. So there was a lot of, you know, physical and emotional abuse. And again, that can be anchors as well. It would seem when things were looking up, they were brought back down to a lower vibratory state due to financial loss, injury, illness, family disputes, bad luck, um, severe paranormal activity, etc. It is obvious that the entity liked to display its power through the severe paranormal activity of apports, psychokinesis, and or telekinesis, aka moving things around like doors, drawers, um, pyrokinesis levitating people, psychic attacks, nightmares, essay, or other types of physical attacks, etc., as a form of oppression. There were definitely points of influence, such as marital spats and arguments, not to mention the part where the demonic entity tried to possess Jack, which tells me he most likely displayed other forms of behavior that wasn't his own, like anger. I got a lot of anger imprints on Jack. So I feel like he might have had anger issues again and his past traumas made it easier to bring up those anger issues. And if he did have an addiction, it would feed into that more. And also as I typed up these notes, I was feeling that anger. I was like, mm, that's not good. But I was actually able to separate that anger from myself quite easily. When it made the one daughter Karen so ill it almost killed her, I believed it was trying to possess her as well. If she would have given up her fight of her illness, she definitely would have been possessed. And that's scary to think about. All in all, it took four exorcisms to kick out the entity from the family, and while many skeptics questioned the validity of this incident, through my own experience with seeing the entity, Firsthand, I know it's real. So during this channel of this case, I saw the entity. It tried to pretend to be that uh, one female earthbound spirit. And then once I was able to peel back the layers like an onion, it showed itself. And it, I'll show a picture. Guys, this thing was nasty and scary AF. It was bad. It was bad. This thing was nasty. But, yeah definitely not fake. They were not clout chasing. They were not trying to get any kind of financial gain or attention. It, yeah, it was bad. So guys, let me know what you think. What do you think about this case? Do you believe it to be real as well? Um, have you experienced any of this type of paranormal activity? I know I have. So yeah, let me know down below. What do you think? As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see everybody soon and peace out.